scarletmambo.com The following program is dedicated to the memory of the great Latin dance legend Millie Denae and her family in Jackson, New Jersey. This program is co-sponsored with the New Jersey State Council on the Arts, Department of State, and made possible in part by the National Endowment for the Arts. For over a century, Latin dances have captivated audiences around the world. In the early 1900s, it was Rudolf Valentino's sensual Argentine tango that took center stage in silent films. By the 1930s and 40s, the conga and the Cuban rumba had planted their dance seeds in America, while Hollywood stars like George Raft, Cesar Romero, Ricardo Montalban, and the samba queen Carmen Miranda showcased the new wave of Latin dances on the silver screen. By the 1950s, a Latin music legend, Pupi Campos, was teaching television audience members how to dance. But nowhere in the world was the golden age of dance more evident than in New York's famous Palladium Ballroom. Here's Ballet Hispanico's tribute to a wonderful era of Latin dance. In the 1950s, the Palladium Ballroom became world-renowned as the center of popular Latin music and dance. But it didn't start that way. When the Palladium first opened in 1947, it was for whites only. However, because business was poor, a music promoter named Federico Pagani was able to persuade the owner, Max Hyman, to book Latin music. He agreed, but for Sunday matinees only. And so the Palladium became the first downtown dance hall to start a Latin matinee. The music was so successful, though, that it was rapidly booked through the entire schedule. To attract even more customers, the Palladium opened its doors to African Americans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans. And soon the patrons were a happy melange that also included Upper East Side wasps and Jews and Italians from Brooklyn. Class and color melted away in the incandescent rhythm of the music. Situated on the second floor of a building on 53rd Street and Broadway, the Palladium quickly became a magnet for great Latin bands and orchestras like Miguelito Valdez, Benny Moray, Cortijo, Charlie Palmieri, Ismael Rivera, Cesar Concepcion, and Mario Bausa, who featured his sister-in-law Graciela, the very famous Cuban singer. But the undisputed masters of music? The big three. Tito Rodriguez, Tito Puente, Machito, whose real name was Francisco Grillo. There was a fierce rivalry among these bands, composed of excellent musicians and led by three musical dynamos, the Big Three played to sold-out crowds every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. On these nights, the lines of patrons waiting to get in would stretch for blocks. On some evenings, if you could get to the club before 6 p.m., you paid 50 cents for your admission. Otherwise, you had to hand over the grand sum of $2. And what nights those were. They began at 8 o'clock. Killer Joe Piro would give mambo and cha-cha lessons to the uninitiated, teaching them to dance on two the night was filled with the sounds of the big three trying to outdo one another, often playing orchestrations and arrangements by Chico O'Farrell and Ray Santos. The music was relentless. Machito would play one set, then not missing a beat, Puente would step in, followed by Rodriguez, who would blend right in. So it was impossible to tell when one band dropped out and the other began. Nearby on 52nd Street were the jazz clubs, Birdland, The Onyx, Kubop City, and jazz musicians like Dizzy Gillespie, George Shearing, and Cal Jader would stop by and sit in at the Palladium. The Palladium Ballroom attracted the not-so-famous and the famous alike. On any given night, you might rub shoulders with Marlon Brando, Bob Hope, Sammy Davis Jr., Lena Horne, Henry Fonda, Duke Ellington, and others. But it wasn't just the music. It was also the dance and the dancers. The mambo craze that first swept America and then Europe in the 1950s began at the Palladium. Everyone was doing the mambo. The airwaves were filled with mambo hits. Puente with Picadillo, Rodriguez with Mambo Mona, and Machito with Asia Minor. And even jazz greats like Errol Garner, Charlie Parker, and Sonny Rollins fell under mambo's spell, as can be heard on their many Latin recordings from the 1950s. The Palladium proclaimed itself the Temple of Mambo, and the style dance there was particularly elegant, smooth, fluid. But if you went to this ballroom to dance, you had better be good, because you would be among the very best dancers in the world. 
On Wednesday nights, the popular floor shows featured the professionals like the Mambo Aces and the Cha Cha Aces. Cuban Pete partnered with Millie Denae. Augie and Margot blended an almost ballet like style with their dance and added acrobatic lifts and spins. For their performances, they were paid $15 a week. And yes, they were taxed. The irresistible rhythms of the great bands kept the dance floor filled until the ballroom closed at 4 a.m. Ballet Hispanico is pleased to present a tribute to that exciting and golden time when mambo and Latin rhythms ruled the dance floor. And for a while this evening, the Palladium lives on, brighter and more vivid in our memories, with each character larger than life, each more memorable than the next. Well, we could not recreate the exact period, because that would be impossible. So what we took is the ideas of the people that went there, and we put them all in one night. We took the socialite, the young girl who's underage who comes in, we took the Casanova, uh, we took the school mart, uh, who's very shy. Uh, we took a young boy coming in, a hyper, and the people from the neighborhood that would go to the nightclub, and the, 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 also the people that would, went every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, and we put them all together on this one night. And, and what we try to do is look backwards in a loving way to all of the people who inhabit the Palladium. Angelica Burgos, and I play the character of Mira. And she's the first one to come in into the Palladium nightclub, and um, I'm everyone's friend. I know the entire orchestra. I know every guest that comes in into the club, and she's just like this busybody. She knows everybody, what's going on, what's going to happen, who should be with who, what needs to happen, and I'm sort of a little bit like in charge of what's happening at the Palladium night. Uh, my name is Rodney Hamilton, and I play the role of Antonio. My wife is Veronica, Veronic, and um, we are kind of like the um, owners of the club. Uh, we, we teach the dance lessons. We're the best dancers in, in the Palladium. You know, uh, we have a big nightclub act, and it's kind of based off of. Um, Augie and Margot. Augie and Margot were Palladium superstars who became internationally famous and were often featured on the hit television program, The Ed Sullivan Show. Our characters are very, um, very proud to be dancers, very proud to, to see that the band is looking nice, that the tables are looking nice, that, that our clientele is having a good time and everybody is, is having a really great time. But at the same time, we have our own conflicts being a married couple, <laughs> you know, being married is not easy.